Hello, I'm Mark Zafirio. I'm a head and neck surgeon at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. So thyroid cancer starts in the thyroid gland. Um, most thyroid cancer is confined to the thyroid gland, but about a third of thyroid cancer does spread to lymph nodes. So when thyroid cancer spreads to lymph nodes, it starts in the lymph nodes right here in the neck, right around the thyroid gland. So these are called the central compartment lymph nodes or the paratracheal lymph nodes. It can then spread to the second echelon of lymph nodes, which is the lateral neck lymph nodes in the, either the right or the left lateral neck. Um, Again, about a third of patients um, with the typical uh, uh, thyroid cancer, which is papillary thyroid ca cancer, making up about 85% of thyroid cancer, do have uh, spread to lymph nodes, but the majority do not. When cancer spreads to the lymph nodes, it's important to remember that it generally does not affect the prognosis of um, the patient with thyroid cancer. So for the vast majority of patients who have papillary thyroid carcinoma, um, about 85% of patients uh, have, have papillary thyroid carcinoma. Um, spread to the lymph nodes does not affect the, the ultimate uh, prognosis, uh, meaning that they can go on to live a normal life, uh, a normal lifespan, so it's not a reason to panic. It is, however, uh, a reason to, um, to seek uh, treatment by a team of uh, thyroid specialists who can properly evaluate um, the degree of lymph node spread and formulate the proper treatment plan for for the patient. Thyroid cancer is a team sport, um, so uh, the thyroid cancer team includes the thyroid surgeon, uh, either a head and neck surgeon or an endocrine surgeon, uh, and then uh, the uh, second member of the team is the uh, medical endocrinologist. So they focus on uh, adjuvant treatment if needed, which meaning uh, any treatment after the thyroid surgery, and also um, uh, treatment with thyroid hormone uh, if that is needed. Uh, after thyroid surgery. That's an important aspect of quality of life. The third member of the team is a radiologist. Um, so the most important uh, radiology study for thyroid cancer is the thyroid ultrasound. It's a very subjective test um, that um, it's important to have somebody, uh, a radiologist who is very experienced with this and who can accurately detect and map out the lymph nodes that significantly helps the surgeon uh, in the preoperative planning. Um, and then uh, the fourth member of the team that is critical is, a, is an experienced pathologist to, to diagnose the type of thyroid cancer and also to be able to accurately detect if the thyroid cancer is in, in, in lymph nodes in the neck, either in the central neck or in the lateral neck. So treatment for thyroid cancer is generally surgery. Um, and uh, sometimes adjuvant treatment uh, is needed uh, for thyroid cancer. When you think about the treatment, it's very important uh, general principle that, that all patients need to keep in mind is that the first treatment, uh, the first surgery is the most important. Um, so it is important to find um, an experienced team, a team that you're comfortable with. This is generally uh, a team um, at a tertiary care uh, center, uh, perhaps an academic center or a university uh, where, they, where they study the thyroid cancer, where they see a lot of thyroid cancer patients, where they have surgeons and endocrinologists who specialize in only the treatment of the, uh, of, of the patients with thyroid cancer. Um, and that ensures that uh, the patient will have the appropriate preoperative evaluation with the appropriate imaging and planning so that they have um, the initial uh, surgery that is done well, that it's done completely, that all the disease is removed, and that they don't have to have subsequent uh, surgeries down the road. It is common to take out lymph nodes with thyroid surgery. So uh, about a third of patients with thyroid cancer uh, do have lymph node metastases. Again, these lymph node metastases can be in the central uh, compartment of the neck, which is the lymph nodes right around the thyroid gland. These are called the central compartment lymph nodes or the paratracheal lymph nodes, or in the lateral neck. Um, that's the second echelon of lymph nodes. So the most common place for lymph node spread is to the central compartment lymph nodes. Um, these lymph nodes are the first echelon of lymph nodes and about a third of patients with thyroid cancer will have spread to these lymph nodes. So when we do the preoperative evaluation, again the ultrasound is a very important aspect of the preoperative evaluation for thyroid cancer. We look for lymph nodes. We do a comprehensive ultrasound. We look for the lymph nodes in the central compartment and we look for the lymph nodes in the lateral neck. Sometimes we also get other imaging studies too to evaluate um, the necks of uh, patients with, with thyroid cancer, uh, one of those being a CAT scan, a CT scan. But the, the most important thing is that a preoperative evaluation is done thoroughly. That allows the surgeon to map out the, um, the lymph nodes in the neck. During the surgery, the surgeon will 
um, look at the imaging before surgery to, to map out the uh, particulars of where these lymph nodes are located uh, and then be able to um, appropriately dissect the lymph nodes that have disease. And there's also an intraoperative aspect of this, uh, of this process. The surgeon uh, intraoperatively evaluates the lymph nodes and can send those lymph nodes to the pathologist during the surgery to evaluate for, uh, for cancer. And if one lymph node has cancer, the surgeon generally removes all of the lymph nodes in that particular area uh, so, that the, 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 so that the disease does not come back and so that the patient does not have to have a, a further surgery in that area. Um, the, um, uh, if there's a, for example, if there's a central compartment lymph node that, that has uh, metastatic cancer, all of the central compartment lymph nodes on that particular side are typically removed. The same with the lateral neck. If there's a lateral neck lymph node out here uh, that has cancer, all of the lymph nodes in, in these echelon of lymph nodes are typically removed. We do not recommend lymph node plucking, plucking out a lymph node here or there, because that leads to recurrence, that leads to persistent disease, because if one lymph node has cancer, Typically, that means that there may be some other lymph nodes around it that have microscopic disease that may need to be removed uh, as well. So we really focused, as surgeons, we really focused on compartmentalized surgery, meaning removing all of the lymph nodes in that particular compartment when you do have the surgery. And that minimizes the chance that the patient has to go back for a second surgery later on. So rare thyroid cancers include cancers like medullary thyroid carcinoma. Medullary thyroid cancer makes up about 2 to 3 percent of thyroid cancer. It also includes um, other types of rare variants of common thyroid cancer. So as we, as we discussed earlier, papillary thyroid cancer and follicular thyroid cancer are common rare variants of these cancers. With papillary, you have tall cell variants, for example. You have diffuse sclerosing variants in the younger population. So these are, these are the types of rare cancers um, that we're, we're speaking of. You also have anaplastic thyroid carcinoma, which is a, a particularly aggressive type of thyroid cancer that occurs in less than 1% of patients uh, who have thyroid cancer. So when you have these rare types of uh, thyroid cancer, it's particularly important to seek a team of surgeons, a team of endocrinologists that have particular experience with this type of cancer. For instance, medullary thyroid carcinoma. At MD Anderson Cancer Center, where I practice, we, we see approximately 5 to 10 percent of the medullary thyroid carcinoma patients in the country. So the team of doctors at MD Anderson Cancer Center has the advantage of having a high volume. Even though it's a rare cancer, we still see a high volume of these patients. And it also allows us to study novel therapies for this type of cancer and to develop clinical trials and new treatment regimens. So you need to seek treatment at a center. Uh, generally, for these rare cancers, it's going to be an academic center, a university-type uh, setting, uh, where, where the, the surgeons and the endocrinologists see a large volume of this disease and have the clinical trials and the tools to uh, be on the cutting edge of treatment for this disease. So for patients with recurrent thyroid cancer, um, so we, we go back to the general principle that when you're, when you're, uh, when you're when you have a patient with thyroid cancer, the first treatment is generally the most important, the first surgery. Now, that being said, there are some patients who uh, develop recurrence or persistent disease, and there are many reasons for that. One reason can be the biology of the tumor, the type of the tumor. You can have a particularly aggressive type of cancer, and that can dictate the, the pattern of, of, of recurrence uh, in the future. The second reason can be the extent of the disease. If, if some patients have extensive disease to start with, even if you have a good surgery, you still have a higher risk of recurrence. It doesn't mean that you're absolutely going to get a recurrence. It just means that your risk is a little bit higher. And the third reason would, could be that you didn't have an appropriate preoperative evaluation and that your surgeon didn't have the appropriate plan when they did your first surgery. And, and, and so maybe they didn't remove all of the disease or they didn't remove all of the lymph nodes that they needed to remove. So when you are seeking treatment for a recurrent cancer, it follows the same principle. Your next surgery is the most important surgery, and you need to find that experienced surgeon who has experience with the particulars of recurrent thyroid surgery. Some of those particulars are scarring and inflammation associated with previous thyroid surgery. So you have to be aware that, um, that that's going to be an issue that increases the risk of side effects and complications. So you need a surgeon that's experienced with those types of surgeries and has the surgical techniques to be able to handle uh, recurrent tumors and the scar tissue that's, that the patients have. I practice uh, at MD Anderson Cancer Center, so many of our physicians at MD Anderson Cancer Center have a, uh, we have a long history of, 
of a uh, strong relationship with, with Thyka and with, the, uh, with Gary Bloom, uh, the executive director and the members of the board. Um, many of our patients who um, we see at MD Anderson, we refer to Thyka for, um, for uh, the survivors group and that support group. Um, it's such a, um, an incredible resource, this, this type of support group that's available nationally. And we really commend uh, Gary Bloom, the executive director and the board, for the work that they do to, uh, to make this possible, to connect these thyroid cancer survivors and to give them the information they need to, uh, to feel comfortable with their diagnosis of thyroid cancer and to find the specialists that um, can help them to best treat their thyroid cancer.